this this part here is after everything. This is what he had to say. Like honestly, honestly, like I I would have expected a little less negligence at this point. I'll be going down into the gas. We're gonna get caught. Hello, everyone. So I thought I'd give you all an update. What's been going on and. We've been recently protesting uh, large head offices of supermarkets, uh, government buildings, and um, also uh, welfare certification groups. What we're trying to do is obviously create awareness of the back of the film Pignorant, my new feature length documentary, which exposes the corruption behind the welfare movement that are certifying products from made from pigs who have suffered and been tortured in CO2 gas chambers. Part of this campaigning is to force transparency from supermarkets. Supermarkets have a responsibility to let the customer know at the point of purchase what is happening to these pigs because the labeling definitely doesn't show that. It's a small win that is achievable and that is one that the public can get behind. Vegan animal rights activist or not, most of the public want to be told the truth and want transparency. And also if there is transparency on pork products, let's face it, a lot of people simply won't buy it because they will be informed. The other day, we protested the Sainsbury's head office in London. But during the protest, their director of corporate affairs, Rebecca Riley, came out to speak to me, which I, I actually thought was quite brave of her because there's a lot of, you know, quite angry protesters and we should be angry, passionately opposing the torture of these sentient beings. And she said to me that, We know people are going to buy bacon and you supply what people want, but you need to tell them and make so they can make an informed choice. Okay. That's it. Do you know I will come back to Okay, you. thank you very much. She will look into this and get back to me. <clears throat> I was very clear with her. If you want to see the video, we'll leave it linked down below so you can watch that video, come back and listen to their actual email response that they gave me off the back of that conversation. In the conversation, she's saying, you know, we care about the pigs. I was like, do you care about their suffering? She's like, well, I haven't been informed about this topic. I said, you should be informed because basically they're supplying a bunch of pork products made from pigs who have been tortured, it's gross negligence that you're not informed. And I said, you need to be transparent with your customers, otherwise we will force transparency by showing the customers what they're actually paying for and not hearing it from Sainsbury's themselves, which I think that it's better, much better if someone like Sainsbury's or the other large supermarkets like Tesco or Waitrose or Asda, this isn't just about Sainsbury's by the way, it's, a, it's all large supermarkets who have a, a, a responsibility in what they are marketing to consumers. The customer deserves to be informed so they can make an informed choice. This is what I said to her. And uh, she said she'll go away, she'll think about it. I actually showed her the footage from the Pilgrim's Pride gas chamber that I exposed in 2021. And that is featured in the documentary Pignorant. And uh, she didn't really wanna watch it. When she did see it, she seemed, I mean, I guess slightly affected by it. Um, it was very PR kind of thing, but I gave her the benefit of the doubt, went away. Uh, told, uh, called off the protest at that point. We've been protesting for a few hours at that stage. Called it off as a gesture of goodwill and see what they would come back with. Now, Rebecca didn't actually come back to me. It was a woman called Sarah Breach. Uh, she is the media relations manager at, at Corporate Affairs for Sainsbury's. So she's handled it off to someone else to get back to me. It says, good morning, Joey. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us on Thursday. As promised, we've looked into this and we can assure you that all of our suppliers have to meet strict welfare standards and be certified under one of our approved farm assurance schemes, in addition to complying with EU legislation. Now, if they had taken the time to watch Pignorant or do any kind of independent research at all, they would know that the criticism is, the criticism is on these um, farm assurance schemes. The, that is the criticism. These farm assurance schemes and the labeling on the products is misleading consumers and they're not telling them about the horrors of CO2 gas. Please find a comment below addressing your concerns from the Director of Food and Sustainability at the British Retail Consortium, the industry body which represents retailers including Sainsbury's. So we've got Andrew Opie here, Andrew Opie, Director of Food and Sustainability at the BRC said, wait for it, <clears throat> I'm sure you'll be very like surprised at how unique this is. Like no, it's not actually, this here is another cookie cutter response to this topic. I was actually quite baffled and surprised actually that even though we've investigated it, even though I've brought out the first UK footage and even though there's footage all over the world and even though every single scientist just opposes CO2 and every almost every welfare organization has like opposed it in some way, he would still come out and say this. 
He said, animal welfare is extremely important to retailers. They work closely with their suppliers to ensure high welfare standards and supply chains are regularly audited to ensure expectations are met and maintained. Isn't that a bunch of nonsense? That is a bunch of nonsense and that's just not good enough. Supply chains are not regularly audited because how come we are the ones who keep pulling out these investigations? How come it's never the director of food and sustainability at the BRC who's pulling out these investigations from turkey farms, chicken farms, pig farms, and pulling out footage from get CO2 saying this is horrible, we need to stop this from happening or tell the consumer. It's never the supermarkets. You never see like bodies like the RSPCA doing independent investigations or Red Tractor doing independent investigations into their industry. It's always independent investigators who don't have a conflict of interest going in and investigating and bringing that out and forcing a response from the supermarkets. That's what happens. They are not auditing the farms or the slaughterhouses. CO2 is regarded as the, this, this part here is, after everything, this is what he had to say. Like, honestly, honestly, like I, I would have expected a little less negligence at this point, seeing as we've been out the front protesting, the footage is already out there, and um, Sainsbury's are supplied by massive gas chamber companies. So CO2 is regarded as the most humane method of slaughter for pigs and it minimizes potential stress during live animal handling. CO2 is regarded as the most humane method of slaughter for pigs. Andrew Oppie, 2024. Make sure that that is etched into history, what he just said there. That's their response. CO2 is the most humane method for pigs. CO2 is literally a torture method. The animals are not stunned. You know, I'm, a, I'm an animal rights activist. I don't want animals to be killed at all. But from a welfare perspective, the animals are being tortured before they're rendered unconscious, not stunned and then slaughtered. That's not the case with gas chambers. They have an extreme aversion to the gas. They are suffering beyond belief in complete agony and terror for about 40 seconds, sometimes over a minute. Sometimes you still see them moving after two or three minutes before they are rendered insensible to pain. So it's torture, insensible to pain. It's not insensible to pain and then slaughter. But he's saying it's regarded as the most humane slaughter method for pigs. That is, it is literally not. It is literally not. You, you, what you probably meant to say is it's regarded as the most humane method of slaughter currently economically viable for pigs, maybe. Maybe that's what you meant. But you should have been careful about your response here. Because if that's the most humane method of slaughter for pigs, then you just proved my point. If a torture method is the most humane method of slaughter for pigs, then it's just not even humane by a welfareist definition. It's just torture, essentially. So no one agrees with you, Andrew. No one agrees with you. Even bodies that, that put their logo on the meat agree that they need to find alternative killing methods, which I would also disagree as because they're, viol they're violating the rights of pigs. But you know, no one's agreeing with you. Not even many in the meat industry don't agree with you, Andrew. So what are you saying? As this method is not unique to Sainsbury's, I'm including a contact from the British Meat Processors Association on this email as they would be best placed to discuss the matter further from an industry perspective. Many thanks, Sarah. Incredible that they would, they would tag in the email the British Meat Processors Association and all they do is try to, what are they? They're, they're basically a front to secure sales for the meat industry, export, imports, all this sort of stuff. They are an industry. Why would I want an industry perspective on an animal protection issue, on an animal welfare issue, and an animal rights issue? Why would I want an industry perspective? Obviously, they have an incredible bias to make money. So I thought that that was particularly audacious of them and incredibly like dismissive of the protest, actually. It's a response, so I'll give them that. I am actually, they did give a response. A lot of supermarkets haven't, so credit where credit is due for at least engaging, which is how I opened up my email back. Hello, Sarah. First of all, I appreciate that Sainsbury's has taken the, the time to give a response. This shows a willingness to engage with the serious concerns that have been raised for decades about CO2 as a slaughter method. I am aware that some stress may be minimized during the handling of pigs, but this does not address the profound and excruciating suffering experienced by the animals who are lowered down into the gas. Most of Sainsbury's customers are completely unaware of the serious welfare implications of CO2 gas. So Sainsbury's and other large supermarkets have a duty to be transparent with their customers at the point of purchase. We are calling on Sainsbury's and other supermarkets to provide transparent labeling on products made from pigs who were killed in CO2 gas. 
which succinctly outline the horrific suffering the animals experience. This way, customers can make an informed choice as to whether they still want to purchase these products. The British Meat Processors Association, who you've included in, in this email, does not have a primary interest in protecting animals or providing transparency to the customer. In fact, anything that may affect meat industry profits would conflict with the goals of the BMPA, as they primarily serve the interests of their members, the, uh, others in the pork industry. See the key role of the BMPA from their website. The key role of the BMPA is to act as a conduit between the government and the meat industry to safeguard the interests of our members as well as the businesses and customers they serve or consumers they serve. They don't serve the consumers. That's, that's, that's nonsense. They're, they're, they're safeguarding the interests of their members and businesses. That's their, that's their, their, their key role. So why would, you, why would you loop them in as someone who would be concerned with the rights of pigs? They're using them for the money and they're concerned with their members, the, the animal killers, not the animals. They use CO2 because it's very efficient and it's cheap. They don't care about, um, they don't balance that with welfare. It's, it's a complete scam. It's a, it is a complete scam. They don't say it's the most humane, humane method available, that's why we're using it. No, you're using it because it's efficient and cheap and makes the most money and you can slaughter so many more pigs in a, in, a small, in a slaughterhouse with one gas chamber than you could with electric stun slaughterhouses. It helps the industry. I find it especially troubling that Andrew Oppie from the BRC has said CO2 gas is regarded as the most humane slaughter method for pigs. This is simply not true. CO2 slaughter is tantamount to a torture method as the animals experience extreme suffering before being rendered unconscious. Uh, and here's my final statement to them. I know that the pork industry is most concerned with financially viable methods, not with more humane methods. True, they, they want financially viable methods, not humane methods. If they cared about what was humane, they wouldn't be doing it at all. Which is why they would prefer to keep CO2 as the standard. Because of the unwillingness by the industry to change, it's imperative that large supermarkets like Sainsbury's, at bare minimum, let their customers know what they are paying for when they buy pork products. And then I left some CO2 facts from our website, Pignorant website. I mean, ubiquitously agreed upon in the scientific space that it's horrifying. I mean, what more do you need? These aren't even vegans that agree. People are disturbed even studying the topic. They don't even wanna to talk to us uh, in the documentary, they didn't want to be interviewed about it because they know it's horrible and they probably feel, feel that there's some type of ethical implications of them even doing research on this topic because it's, it's so, it's a torture method. They're torturing the animals to even research at this. The industry are torturing animals to serve bacon to unknowing consumers and to make a bunch of cash. Why would they be concerned about the welfare of the animals in these gas chambers? Sainsbury's need, Sainsbury's to, and all the large supermarkets, not just Sainsbury's, at least Sainsbury's responded with something. At least they're willing to engage. So maybe Sainsbury's out of all the supermarkets might be someone probably, likely not, but, but they might be, at least they're engaging. Someone like Tesco probably would never engage. At least they're engaging, there might be some light in the end of the tunnel there. But basically, if you can get some labeling on these, on these products, this, this would obviously deter people from buying it because they want to be informed. And when, once they're informed, it's like the cage egg situation. It's like the cage egg situation. There's cage eggs on the cage egg, people went buy free range, even though I have serious, uh, serious, serious concerns about free range eggs. Um, but yeah, it does deter people and the pork industry know that, which is why they spend all this money on advertising and marketing at the point of purchase to get people to pick up the product. So there you go, that was the Sainsbury's response. Kind of saw it coming in a way. I didn't think they would go, yeah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Like tagging the British meat industry, <laughs> essentially the industry in this email about the concerns about animals is kind of like, well, why would you tag them? Why would you tag the oppressor who's making money and ask them to be kind to the animals that they're making money off of? Not one of their primary interests. So yeah, I'll leave the video from the Sainsbury's director down below. That's their email back. That's their uh, reply. That was my reply back to them. You know, it was quite loud in the middle of London. Everyone heard it. We're, we're, we're going to, and, and I said to them, if they do not become transparent with the customer, this goes to all the supermarkets, the customer will find out in another way. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you all for watching. Please share Pignorant with as many people as possible to create awareness so people can make informed choices. You know, we really need to see the end of this abhorrent industry, the pork industry and other industries that exploit and kill animals for profit. Obviously, you know, the welfare movement is failing the animals. There's, there's, one, there's one solution here. It's to give animals fundamental rights to, for them to actually be, be protected from scumbags who want to exploit and kill them and to boycott industries that won't listen essentially. The animals need rights that legally protect them. And we need, and, and before that happens, we all need to do a mass boycott and then apply pressure to the industry to force them to change and to create awareness with the public and create public outrage about this because they're lying to the public. 
Okay, we want the public on our side because they're the they're the evildoers. They're the ones torturing the animals and lying to the public. We're the whistleblowers, but we want the public on board. Thank you all. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.